a lot of times the concept of the RMF, the risk management framework, is difficult to understand. So I thought this uh, simple breakdown, this simple analogy uh, would help you guys. Check it out.
So I thought that this particular analogy would be better suited for people to understand. At some point, everyone has obtained a driver's license or is in the process of obtaining a driver's license. So let's look at the analogy of obtaining a driver's license versus the RMF. So the first phase would be for you to prepare to get your driver's license. So you go to the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles or Motor Vehicle um, Administration, uh, depending on where you live, and ask questions, visit their website, find out what you need to know, things you need to bring, um, things you need to do to get the driver's license. So now let's compare that to the prepare stage or uh, prepare phase of the RMF. Same thing, you prepare for um, all phases of the RMF. Then the next thing you want to do is figure out what type of driver's license that you need to get. Are you going to get a driver's license for a motorcycle? Is it going to be a commercial um, driver's license? Are you going to be driving one of those big 18 wheelers? Are you going to get a class A, class B or whatever it is? Same thing with the RMF, the categorized phase. You determine what type of impact level and what what category that system falls under. Is it going to be a low system? Is it going to be a high system? Is it going to be a moderate system? Next would be the select phase of the RMF. And looking at uh, getting a driver's license, you go to the, um, the DMV and you get the driving book, the driving guide that tells you um, what type of questions will be on your driver's test. So you have to make sure you get the right book for the right test. So uh, selecting the security controls would be um, the RMF's phase where you select the, the right security controls for the right type of um, system. So for right security controls for a low system, right security controls for a moderate system, and the right security controls for a high system. Then next, um, you want to practice your driving. So this could be compared to the RMF where you implement those security controls that you identified in the earlier phase. And then next, when you get your um, practice in you and you feel you're ready, you go for a road test. Like into the RMF, once you get your security controls in, you go for assessment. So they test you to see if you know um, how to drive a car, you know how to observe all the traffic laws and uh, road signals. Same thing with the um, assessment phase. They, they assess your implementation of those security controls. Then next, you get your driver's um, license. You get your driver's license or your learner's permit once you are deemed worthy of um, obtaining a driver's license, all right? Same thing with the authorized phase. The authorizing official authorizes you to um, use that system in the organization or on the network. So the authorizing official gives you an ATO. When you drive and you pass your driver's test, get a driver's license. Then next, once you get your driver's license, your driver's license could be taken away. Um, you have law enforcement officers who monitor you to make sure that you're observing all the traffic laws and obeying all the um, the rules of the road. Okay, so it's not enough for you to just get the driver's license. If you drive without a seatbelt, you get a ticket. If you drive um, a car that has broken mirrors, um, you get a ticket. If you drive under the influence, uh, you could get arrested and um, you would have to go uh for some classes and take your and uh, try to get your driver's license over again um, same thing with the monitor phase of the rmf if you do not um, observe the laws within your um, authorization then your authorization could be revoked and same thing with driving uh, getting a driver's license if you decide hey you know what I want to start a business and I need to get a commercial driver's license. You would have to go back to the drawing board. Same thing with the RMF. 
um, if you decide to add something additional to your information system, then you might have to go back to the drawing board. Hope that makes sense. So NIST 800-37 Rev 2, that's revision two. It talks about seven phases. The first phase is the prepare phase. This is your process initiation. Um, like uh, the name of the phase says, prepare. So you prepare for everything that you're about to do. We'll look at the next one, which is categorize. Um, categorize your information system. So the whole point of what you're trying to do is figure out what the uh, water, high watermark would be. What is your system going to be considered? Is it going to be considered a low system or a moderate system or a high system? Next phase will be the select phase. So once you've figured out if your system is a um, low, moderate, or high system, what type of protection would you uh, put in place to protect the low moderate or high system. So that's where you'll select your security controls. And like I said before, a uh, control is something that you put in place to reduce risk. So it's a security measure you put in place to reduce risk. So security controls, you select what type of security controls. Are you going to put the firewall? Are you going to add um, a complex passwords, stuff like that? Then the next one will be implement. So now that you selected the security controls that apply to that low, moderate, or high system, how are you going to configure them? How are you going to implement those security controls? So you meet up with your admins and they will um, implement those security controls to install things they need to install, set of firewall rules and things of that nature. Then the next thing after you've in, you've implemented those security controls, then an assessor has to assess to make sure that you did what you did correctly. So they're going to go by um, their um, policy documents. They're going to go by um, NIST 800-53A, um, and they're going to look at your security controls to see if they're NIST compliant and if they meet your organization's um, mandates all right so when, once they assess those secure the, the implementation of those security controls they will let you know if you passed or you failed and then um, for the things that failed you as the ISO has to come up with a plan of action to fix those things that failed all right, so now you go to the next phase, which is the authorized phase. So you take all the information about that information system, the assessment results, the um, memo um, for authorization, the uh, poems that the plan of action, the milestones, the things that failed and your plan to fix them. And you bring it over to the authorizing official or the authorizing officials, depending on how um, that agency is set up. You go over everything and they review the whole body of evidence to make a uh, determination if that system will be authorized. So you explain to the AO that um, this system has met um, our standards and the things that fail, the minor things, and they could be fixed. Um, so once that is done, the AO will either deny based on what you presented him or her or approve. When they approve it, it's called uh, an ATO, an authorization to operate. If it's a denial, denial of op uh, authorization to operate. Then the next thing after that, once you are successful and you have your, um, your ATO, that means you're authorized to use that system in the organization. Once you have it, then you go to the next phase. You start to monitor the system to make sure that nothing changes um, from um, the state it was when it was authorized. And if any changes do occur, um, you have to make sure that those changes do not make the system less secure. All right. So that's the whole premise of the, the RMF, the Risk Management Framework. 
Hey, if you're interested in any of my cybersecurity videos, here is one I would recommend for you. It's the Information System Security Officer Training. This course comes with tons of videos, um, a CAP, which is the Certified Authorization Professional Bootcamp, comes with quizzes, comes with a certificate of completion, resume template, um, ebook, monthly live q a sessions the ability to ask questions as well and get a response back in uh, 48 hours also has interview prep and job prep so this is a power packed course for more information visit www.cyberfirstacademy.com thanks don't forget to subscribe and like we're also on ig at cyberfirstsolutions Thank you.